Hey, what is up? It's me. I'm back for another weekly vlog and it's it's really soon after the last one because that one was so late and I'm back with a brand new super expensive collectible that I, I paid periodically over the course of like two years. Thank God for payment plans. They're great. But anyway, this is the Hot Toys Iron Man Mark 85 from Avengers Endgame, a figure that I've had on pre-order since like May 2019. And it is the Iron Man suit to end all Iron Man suits. And everyone who has picked up the other Hot Toys Iron Man suits over the years do attest to that as this is the definitive Iron Man collectible figure and the best one you can get on the market right now and to finally have it here in person after waiting not just those two years but i've said many times i waited you know really since 2014 for this iron man been waiting since 2014 to get the avengers as hot toys figures in their final appearances the original six avengers plus thanos that is and of course i got thanos last year but now here we are with the Mark 85, the Iron Man Mark 85, and it is just absolutely stunning. And I, of course, it's fully articulated. I've already got it in a pose, though, on the stand, and so I'm not moving it right now because I did just finish like an hour-long assembly getting all of the batteries in place because it is pretty crazy, actually. The armor plates on the backs of the arms do actually come off, and then same with the uh, thighs here. These are actual plates that do come off, and then you have to insert uh, rows of three micro batteries into little panels that are actually designed into the figure. I mean, the design work is just absolutely stunning and unbelievable how they're able to make figures like this. I've always seen other Hot Toys Iron Man suits in person in like comic book shops over the years, but to now actually own one and to have the best one here in-house, finally, slowly I'm inching toward the best Hot Toys collection that I've always dreamed of in not just having like Anakin, Obi-Wan, uh, and the characters from the prequels and the Clone Wars like Ahsoka, Maul, and the 332nd Legion, but the true definitive Infinity Saga set of the original six Avengers in their final appearances with armored Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet. This is something that I've been building to for years and slowly over 2021, it's going to come together and I'm very excited by it. Hopefully it won't come together before I actually finish my own custom Lego showcase for Avengers Endgame, but this has been many years in the making for me and this Iron Man suit, despite the uh, stuck screw that I encountered on the top of the helmet that added probably an extra 40 minutes of troubleshooting to the assembly process has been well worth the two-year wait. Now this is the Robert Downey Jr. portrait, the Robert Downey Jr. head sculpt as he appeared in Avengers Endgame and there are a lot of people, a lot of collectors that really dislike this and I totally understand why. I wouldn't say that this is really quite as good as the likeness they achieved for their Avengers Infinity War uh, Robert Downey Jr. head sculpt. I'm still satisfied with this and would be totally okay if this is the one that I wind up sticking with or maybe I miss the return program but believe it or not Hot Toys actually uh, opened up this whole I guess exchange program with Sideshow I think or I have no idea how it works actually I've yet to look into it where you can actually get the Avengers Infinity War head sculpt instead of this one and I mean I get it I don't particularly think this one is necessarily that horrendous. It's not 100% Robert Downey Jr. like maybe the Infinity War version, but it's really not that bad either. It is still stunning. And again, I mean, I would be totally okay with keeping this one. It still does work for me. And it has like the gray highlights and you know, just generally the hair color of Tony Stark from 2023 uh, versus 2018, you know, during Avengers Infinity War. And there are like multiple layers to the packaging, by the way, this is just like the main box though. And my God, not only do the figures never disappoint, of course, because Hot Toys 1-6 scale figures are the best on the market, but uh, this packaging, is just stunning and I cannot wait to pair it with Thanos and Thor and eventually the full team of all six Avengers. I mean like these are worth having on display just by themselves. It, it's just like 
the best graphic you could hope for. They never disappoint, even with the box art. 48 hours later. All right, so it is uh, 1 a.m. now, technically Saturday, March 6th, I think. And uh, the WandaVision series finale happened. By the time you're seeing this vlog, the spoiler embargo lifted. And uh, hopefully my reaction video is up by now. Regardless, um, of course, spoilers for the WandaVision uh, series season finale. Uh, Wanda is now the Scarlet Witch. Officially got the title, got the costume. It happened. She looks amazing. And the whole time I was watching, uh, in the back of my mind, I was like, wow, the costume is simple enough to where I can make a quick figure of that and potentially get away with it. Not before I do the Justice League showcase, but probably just after. So I'm excited by that idea because it looks really cool. Her costume looks great. Um, but speaking of Justice League, the reason that I'm recording right now is I'm sitting here after having spent the last I want to say hour or two, um, probably less, working on applying the base color for Cyborg's body. The sculpt that I've been working on for a couple weeks now totally finalized and ready for paint and I'm doing that now. You know, and all, this is what I always do when working with any high detail sculpts. I always do my best to kind of uh, apply a base layer of black all over it and I did like some gloss paint over some of the thicker areas first. But what's been kind of the real challenge here has been figuring out how I want to paint it. He's got like this really crazy color scheme going on, obviously. It just, it just looks metallic, gunmetal, silver, whatever. But I find myself questioning, like, do I want to fill in various areas of gunmetal? Do I want to go over the black that I applied completely? I don't regret applying a base layer of black. It always needs to be there. But, like, I'm wondering if I should keep any of the black exposed or just go for an all gunmetal secondary color before I start applying the base uh, primary silver sections. And so I'm just kind of pondering this, and uh, I guess I'm having painter's block. Is that a thing? It is now. Uh, but I'm excited nonetheless. All right, well, I did figure out what I wanted to do with Cyborg, and I have been working on painting him up for, like, the last couple days now, and it's been going really well. Um, I actually decided that I wanted to keep a uh, primary or actually a secondary layer of gunmetal dark silver metallic paint uh, as the inner body. And so like all the nooks and crannies and all the like, uh, you know, like the, the tough to reach parts of the sculpt where like, you know, uh, it would be Cyborg's inner body. I have all painted in gunmetal except to like, you know, basically jam a brush into those spaces. Uh, the paint kind of gets everywhere else. And so a lot of the process before I've even been able to paint any of the silver armor has just been uh, kind of inserting all that gunmetal paint, in, you know, like deep into the sculpt and then kind of cleaning up with black paint. And then I can paint on all the silver bits. And I think I'm going to record some footage of me doing this actually, um, just so it's a little bit more clearly illustrated. And it'll probably be the only thing that I actually record myself painting uh, for Zack Snyder's Justice League showcase. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but it's going really well. And Cyborg is turning out amazing. And honestly, it's a bit of a dream come true for me. Finally seeing like a, my full blown Cyborg figure come to life after kind of like never getting the chance to properly do it uh, back in 2017. So with that said, my WandaVision reaction, unfortunately, still has not uh, hit MGF Extra. And that's because I just kind of, you know, took the time and focused on Cyborg instead, which, you know, is a little more important right now with the Zack Snyder's Justice League showcase and really uh, the Snyder Cut coming out really soon here. Zack Snyder's been posting a ton of uh, character clips over the last several days sequentially, and he started with Batman and then did Superman, then Aquaman, uh, Flash, and now Wonder Woman today. And they've all been really amazing, offering all kinds of new glimpses at new footage that we haven't seen before, um, especially the Flashes and uh, also especially, you know, with Wonder Woman and everything everything but for me the biggest takeaways have been um, you know the implications of the story beats that are potentially being alluded to in the flashes character clip and then also uh, just Ray Porter's voice as Darkseid it just sounds amazing he sounds incredible and there are even little glimpses of the nightmare sequence that have started to creep out on social media like the new full-on nightmare sequence that's going to be in Justice League um, you know Zack Snyder's Justice League so I've been kind of trying to avoid that but also AT&T set up an exhibit for 
for the Snyder Cut in Dallas with like all the costumes for the new nightmare sequence actually up on uh, display, which looks really cool. They all look amazing, especially like the Jokers and the Flashes and uh, even Black Canaries in particular. I think Black Canary is in there, if I'm not mistaken. I heard that somewhere and I saw a picture, but I'm not sure if it was actually her costume for the nightmare sequence. But that's all really cool and the Snyder Cut is fastly approaching and I'm really working hard to try to make sure that the showcase happens, um, you know, either by release or like, you know, right around then, just after. But I'm really going for before the release so I don't have to think about it and I can just enjoy the Snyder Cut and kind of move on with my life. We'll see how it goes. Regardless, of course, my WandaVision reaction for the uh, series, I guess uh, season one finale is still not up yet, but I wanted to kind of exchange a few uh, thoughts about the finale with you guys. So um, personally, I absolutely loved it. I do understand why a lot of people um, thought that it was just sort of checking off boxes to wrap up the season. And I think that's totally fair. I think a lot of the criticisms levied at the finale are definitely fair. Personally, I wasn't bothered by uh, a lot of the things that people generally disliked. So for instance, the big one being that Quicksilver wound up going nowhere. Personally, I thought that it made total sense. Personally, I didn't mind that they didn't like fully open up the multiverse uh, with the Quicksilver reveal or anything like that at this point. It's not really the end of the world. And if anything, it was just cool to have Evan Peters be able to portray Quicksilver in the MCU like at all um, versus, you know, not. So I personally don't mind that he just happened to be a dude in Westview and that was the recast that Wanda, uh, you know, kind of created there or Agatha created. The point is the MCU has its Quicksilver. The multiverse hasn't been fully opened yet. Um, so I wasn't really bothered by Ralph Boner. So but yeah, and also I thought that even though the episode was very heavy on the action, I thought it was really cool just seeing a full blown witch in the MCU fighting Wanda, now also essentially a full blown witch as she becomes the Scarlet Witch and she's opening and closing the hex to let people out and uh, starting to realize just the how, how bad the effect has actually been on all of these people. And then everything with uh, Vision and White Vision's fight scenes was great. White Vision, when he first tries to kill Wanda, super, super terrifying and uncomfortable to watch. And I liked how they had that whole very detailed exchange and Vision sort of disproved a lot of what White Vision was programmed to believe by S.W.O.R.D. And now, uh, you know, Hex Vision has has granted all the memories of Vision into the original body that is White Vision. And so I think the, the future for Vision is still bright and he still is absolutely, I think, going to come back. And, uh, you know, also, I personally don't mind that wasn't really wrapped up and that some things kind of didn't have their conclusion, um, like Monica Rambeau, who ultimately did get the whole post credit scene with the scrolls and everything. And, um, you know, I think that it's, it's okay. I think WandaVision had a satisfactory enough finale I do think that some of the emotional beats that we saw in episode eight should have been a little bit more present for this finale too. They were only kind of there for the big, emotional, powerful ending sequence where the hex finally comes down. Um, but yeah, I obviously will be making a Scarlet Wish figure at some point after the Justice League showcase. Uh, Hot Toys actually just put out these pictures of the new figures and they look amazing. I mean, just like, absolutely amazing. Not sure if I'll pick those up myself, but it revealed to me that Wanda's cape is actually more detailed than I realized in the finale. So uh, making uh, Wanda now finally as the Scarlet Witch is uh, going to be a little bit more of an undertaking. So we'll see how that goes and when it goes. <laughs> but uh, for this vlog, I think that's going to do it. And uh, I will see you guys next time. So now we're heading for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm going to get back to work. And uh, also obviously Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming up pretty soon. And uh, Hot Toys Iron Man now right there in the background. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. So take care, stay safe out there, and uh, keep creating. All right, bye-bye.